Hi everyone, this is Mr. West, and today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on trig values of pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. This was a special request from the Chata family. If you have a request yourself, leave a comment and let me know what exercise or worksheet you need done, and I'll go ahead and make a video for you. So in this Khan Academy exercise, we are talking about radians. So you can see at the top, values of pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So I'm actually going to flip over here to the unit circle and show you what is it talking about. So normally when we're talking about circles, you think in degrees. So we have 0 degrees, we have 90 degrees, 180, and it goes around and there's all different kinds of measures. I'm particularly looking at 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Now, a radiant equivalent is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, and so on. Now, what is a radian? A radian is a measure of a circle on the outside. So let me go ahead and draw a quick picture. So if I have a circle here, a radian is the measure so that, okay, if we draw a radius here, and we draw a radius here, and then this segment right here, if this is the distance also of the radius, that is what we would call, that measure is what we'd call a radian. Okay, so that angle measure would be a radian for the value of radius, radius, and then on the outside of the circle, radius. And it turns out that there's two pi radians in a circle, and that's actually the circumference. Okay, so that's quick background on the uh, radians. Now, when we're looking at these values, we see we got the unit circle, and we actually see the sine and cosine values posted here. So this is the sine value, and this is the cosine value. We got sine and cosine um, of these different angle measures. So I'm going to talk about why these angle measures equal, uh, for the different radians, the sine and cosine equal 1 half, square root of 3 over 2, and so on. Okay, so let's go down here. These are the reference triangles. So the main two reference triangles you're going to be using in Khan Academy and in trigonometry are the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. Let's go ahead and start with the 30, 60, 90. So the reason why this distance is 1 right here is because this is talking about the radius of the circle. That is the, whoops, that is the radius of the unit circle. Okay, so that's why that's a one. Now, when we're talking about trig values, we're talking about sine, cosine, and tangent, and I'm gonna first start with 30 degrees. So I'm gonna concentrate on 30 degrees, and then we'll move on to 60. So if we're talking about the sine of 30 degrees, we're talking about the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side is 1 half, and the hypotenuse is one. So 1 half to one is gonna be our sine of 30 degrees. However, if we just divide by 1, technically the value doesn't change, so it stays as 1 over 2. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2. I'm actually going to change to blue just so it matches a little bit better. So we have 1 over 2 for the sine of 30 degrees. Now, what about the cosine of 30 degrees? Well, a little bit different. Now we're talking about the adjacent side, which is this side right here. That's the adjacent side. And that, in this case, it's square root of 3 over 2. And that's going to be over 1 also. Whoops, I don't know where I wrote it to. So we have square root of 3 uh, over 2. Sorry, I forgot to write over 2. Over 1. But again, we found out before, if we divide by 1, the value just stays the same. So it's square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 is just square root of 3 over 2. Now we're finally on to tangent. This is actually the trickiest one um, because we have the opposite side over the adjacent, the opposite side being 1 half. I'm actually going to use some space down here. And then this is going to be divided by square root of 3 over 2. So we have a complex fraction here. In order to deal with that, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal like this. And we see that we can cancel out the 2s, so and we're left with 1 over square root of 3. You almost never see it written that way, though. Instead, it's simplified, getting the radical out of the denominator, and you get square root of 3 over 3. So that's going to be what our tangent is for 30 degrees. Okay, I don't want to emphasize on this process right here. I have other videos for that in case you're interested. Let's move on to 60 degrees. So now that we're done with 30, let me make this a little bit smaller. We're done with 30. Now we're going to move on to 60 degrees. So with 60 degrees, it's very similar to these 30 degree values. So let's start off with a sign. The sign we're going to have the opposite over the hypotenuse. In this case, it's square root of 3 over 2. Or sorry, square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1. Okay, so in that case, when we divide by 1, it just remains the same, just like that. Square root of 3 over 2, sine of 60. 
Now when we do the, uh, the cosine, it's going to be adjacent over the hypotenuse. Again, the hypotenuse is 1. When you divide by 1, it just stays the same. So we get 1 over 2. You'll notice there's a connection here with sine and cosine. It's because they're sharing those sides. Okay, so the opposite side for 60 is the adjacent side for 30 and vice versa. So that's why they have that little connection. The only thing that differs between sine uh, 30 degrees and 60 degrees is the tangent. So that's our last one. We are going to have uh, the opposite over the adjacent side for tangent. So my opposite side is square root of 3 over 2. I need to go down here for this. Just the exact opposite situation that we had right here. So square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. In order to handle this complex fraction, I need to multiply by the reciprocal instead. And you'll see that this one is a little bit more simple, square root of 3 over 1 or just square root of 3. You never really see it written over 1, so I'm going to get rid of that fraction. And we just have square root of 3. Okay, moving on to 45 degrees. We're going to do this, and then we'll get right into the Khan Academy exercises. So this is just background information. So again, we have the radius of the unit circle. Okay, that's what this is. That's why it's a 1 right there. And then we have these different sides. So we have square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. And that's because with the 45, 45, 90, it's an isosceles triangle. There's two equal sides, and that's why they're equal here. So we're talking about the sine. Sine is the uh, opposite over the, uh, sorry, over the hypotenuse. And honestly, it doesn't matter. This is a 45-degree angle, but both of these are 45-degree angles. So we can just stick with one and then use the same values for the other 45-degree angle. So if we have square root of 2 over 2, which is our opposite sign, square root of 2 over 2, over a hypotenuse, our hypotenuse again is 1, so again, it doesn't change the value. So we're going to leave it as square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is going to be the same thing because the, co the adjacent side is the same as the opposite side. And then if we have the tangent, this is actually the easiest of the tangents, we're going to have square root of 2 over 2. That's our opposite side over adjacent side, which is square root of 2 over 2. And if we divide something by itself, okay, well, we can, I can show you another way. We can just multiply it by the reciprocal. And you'll see that all these values cancel out. We're just left with 1. So the tangent of 45 degrees is just 1. Okay, so we're done with all the trig values. Now we can jump into the Khan Academy. If you need a refresher, just rewind. Uh, I'll probably label these with chapter headings in case you're interested. All right, so we're back into our trig values for pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3 exercise in Khan Academy. We're talking about the cosine of pi over 4. One of the first things that you need to do with uh, this exercise is understand what angle are we talking about. I just talked about uh, 45 degrees and 60 degrees and 30 degrees, and now we're switching back to radians. So again, pi over 4, we're talking about 45 degrees. Pi over 6, we're talking about 30 degrees. And then pi over 3, we're talking about 60 degrees. So that's something to keep in mind as we do this. So we recognize if we're talking about pi over 4, we are talking about 45 degrees. So the cosine of 45 degrees, as we saw, is the, the same as the sine of 45 degrees. We're going to put in a fraction here. Let me get this going. So we're going to put in a fraction. I'm not sure why it's not popping up. Okay, let's hide scratch pad. There we go. Hopefully that works. Hmm, that is so odd. It's not, it's not, let me type. And we get square root of 2 over 2, and that should be good. We're on to our next question. So this one, tangent of pi over 6. Again, we need to figure out that pi over 6 is equal to 30 degrees. And if we're talking about tangent, we could just reference this little chart that we have here. We already figured out our tangent. It's square root of 3 over 3. And that's what we're going to type in our answer for pi over 6. So I'm going to go ahead type in square root of 3 over 3. And there we go. Now, this whole triangle up top, you really don't need to know anything about it. The 4, the pi over 6, well, the yard tells you about the pi over 6, but the, the J, K, and L, that's kind of irrelevant to this exercise. We just need to know about um, the angle measure in radians. So point A is on the following unit circle. What are the coordinates of point A? So I kind of mentioned it in the very beginning, but anytime we have a coordinate here, Okay, this is composed of our adjacent side and our opposite side. The opposite side, as you can tell, is going up. So that's going to be our y-coordinate. And then our adjacent side, OK, 
Okay, that's going to the right, as you can see, okay, following that path, and that's going to be our x coordinate. So, in other words, remember how we did the sine and that was over 1 in the cosine? We divided by 1 because of the unit circle, okay? Well, that means that our x value is going to be the cosine of the angle and our y coordinate is going to be the sine of the angle. And I showed you that right in the, from the very beginning right here with these different values. I said that the cosine was going to be that x value and the sine was going to be that y value. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at pi over 3 and we know that pi over 3 is equal to 60 degrees and we're just going to find the cosine and then the sine. So we can just go back to our chart here. If you ever need to, you can always just redraw the triangle and figure it out. But here we have our cosine. Uh, our cosine is going to be 1 half, so that's going to be our x coordinate for this one. So 1 half, 1 over 2, if I can grab it, there we go, 1 over 2, and then our cosine, I think it's square root of 3 over 2, yes it is. So we get square root of 3, I'm going to put my fraction first, square root of 3 over 2, we're going to check it, and there we go, one more to go. Alright, now we're on to sine of pi over 6, this one's my favorite actually, because it is simply 1 half. Okay, again, pi over 6 is 30 degree reference angle, and then we have the sine opposite over hypotenuse, which means just over 1, and so we have 1 half for our answer. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was helpful. Please leave a comment if you need any of these other problems covered. You can even describe the problem in the comment, and I sh should be able to answer it. Uh, if you have any other requests, make a request known in the comment section. I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.